SwiftUI gives us a dedicated path type for drawing shapes. It is very low level, by which I mean you'll usually want to wrap it in something else to make it more useful. But as it's the building block that kind of underlies other work we'll do, it's a good place to start. Now, just like colors, gradients, and shapes, paths are views. This means we can use them just like text views and images, although as you'll see, they're a bit clumsy. Let's start simply enough. We're gonna draw a triangle. Now, there are a few ways of drawing paths, including one that creates a path by accepting a closure of instructions to draw. This closure must itself accept a single parameter, which is the path to draw into. This is brain bending at first because we're creating a path and inside the initializer for the path, we're being passed a path to draw into. But think of it like this. SwiftUI makes the path for us and says, here you go, here's your chance to add to it as much as you want before it's finally drawn to the screen. And what's happening? Now they have lots of methods of drawing squares, circles, arcs, lines, and more. For our triangle, we're gonna to move to a starting position and then draw three lines around. It's a triangle. So we'll say in our body here, there is a path with a path coming in, the path to draw into. We'll start by saying move to CG point X200, Y100. We'll then add a line to CG point X100, Y300. Then path, add a line to CG point uh, X300, Y300. And then path, add line to CG point X200, Y100. 100. As you can see, we've got a black triangle. Now, we haven't actually used CG point before, but I did sneak in a quick reference to CG size back in project six. CG here is short for core graphics, another much older Apple framework for drawing graphics. But it comes with all sorts of primitives for handling graphics, CG point an XY coordinate, CG size, a width and a height, CG rect, uh, a rectangular frame, and more. So we have this large black rectangle. Where you see it depends on which simulator you're using, which is part of the problem of these simple parts here. We've got to draw things using exact coordinates. So if you want to use a path by itself, you either have to accept that sizing 200, 100, 100, 300, across all your devices and hope it's correct, or use something like Geometry Reader to scale them relative to their container. We're gonna look at a better option shortly, but first, let's look at coloring our path. One option is to say fill. We can say our fill here is dot blue. And you'll see a nice blue triangle. We can also say stroke. I could say stroke with blue, in a line width of 10. And that doesn't look quite right. If you look really closely, if I kind of zoom in a bit uh, to how the triangle is drawn, you'll see the bottom two edges are nice and sharp, but the top one is kind of broken. It doesn't really fit together. This happens because SwiftUI makes sure lines connect neatly up with what comes before them and after them, rather than just being a series of individual lines. So when you add a line from here to here, it understands to connect them up nicely. But our last line has nothing after it. So there's no way to make a connection. Now, one way to fix this is to ask SwiftUI to close the subpath, which is the shape we've drawn inside our path so far. We can say path.close subpath. And it now understands, well, that's the end of the path. Let's connect that to the start of the path. Draw the lines up like that. That's one way of doing it. An alternative is to use SwiftUI's dedicated stroke style struct. This gives us control over how every line should be connected to the line after it, called line join, and also how every line should be drawn when it hasn't got a connection after it, called line cap. This is particularly useful because one of the options for join and cap is dot round, which creates gently rounded shapes. So we could say, rather than stroke blue, we'll do stroke blue with style of stroke style, 
and we'll do line width 10, line cap, round, line join, round. And you see we get this lovely rounded corner triangle. And in fact, now you can remove the call to path.close subpath because it's no longer needed. Now using rounded corners like this solves the problem of our rough edged triangle. But it doesn't solve the problem of these fixed coordinates. For that, we've got to move on from paths and look at something more complex called shapes.